Hi, everyone. Hi, Dimitri. How are you? Good. How are yourself? Good, good. Thank you for coming on. Oh, I appreciate you having me. Awesome. So every Monday, I come on, on On the Flip Side, and I have a guest host. And on the flip side, the first Monday every month, we do mindset. And then every other Monday, we'll pick a topic on real estate. And today's guest speaker is Dimitri Boudros. Thanks so much for coming on. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you having me on uh, your show today. Awesome. And uh, so today's topic is Hamilton Market. You're going to be sharing some updates on what you see the market going on and just anything you'd like to share. So should we start with... Um, um just in general what what you've seen maybe in like the last month or what you're seeing in the market in the Hamilton market right now yeah let, let's start with let's start with some stats always uh everyone likes their stats so um so these stats are taken from uh RAB um the real estate association of Hamilton and Burlington um so this is between the January 5th um uh, you know 15th to the 21st ish kind of last month but uh you know uh, sorry, this month, but a little bit earlier. Apologize. Getting stuck in 2022 still. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know, aren't we all? <laughs> so uh, new listings, um, we're approximately 202 to sold listings, 97. So we'll say uh, sales to listing ratio is about 48%. Um, so what that kind of means is that we're in a balanced market. It's, it's no secret to anybody. We've been in a balanced market for, uh, for a little bit now with uh, the market cooling down. Um, we're seeing an average um, sale price of a home at about seven hundred and fifty-three thousand right now in Hamilton. Um, so you know the with this balanced market, of course, you know uh, uh, it, it kind of happened because of inflation, you know, interest rates and stuff like that. So everybody kind of knows that's happened. that's the reason why. Um, so what else now? Um, so the buyer side, let, let's talk a little bit about the buyer side. You want to do that, how the market looks in Hamilton for a buyer? Yeah, or even actually, I would be curious to see on your on your point of view on how I think, which is the buyer side on how or the seller side, actually, like what strategies are they using sellers to try to sell right now? And same thing on the buyer side, like what strategies are they implementing right now? Because I know we've seen a very big change. So I'm curious to see how you're seeing it. Yeah, so the, there's, you know, it, it's a really kind of weird market. Like, you know, there, there's no doubt there's a challenge for both sides. Um, you know, people wanting to get the highest price for their home and, and you know, the buyers wanting to get the best deal. Um, so I, I have seen... Um, uh, a lot of weird things happening. I, I, I have even seen sellers holding uh, offers recently on um, on some homes, which is um, quite unusual, but it's happened in the last couple of weeks. Um, so strategies are all over the place, to be honest. But I think the most important thing as a seller right now is to uh, price your property uh, properly. You know, if you want to see a lot of interest and you want to sell your property quicker, you definitely have to price it right, price it for the, the proper market value. Um, Agreed, because a lot of people still have their minds on the prices as they were last year, especially beginning of last year and kind of not accepting. I feel like that it can't have gone that much down, even though they don't realize it went that much up. You know, it went it went like a crazy amount up. So then it it had to drop to at least that much. So people are kind of still stuck on that February, March timeframe numbers. It, it is. And, and if you compare the statistics from last, um, the, let's say last February, um, 2022, houses were selling, you know, around a million dollars in, in Hamilton. And, and now we're seeing that that price at 753. So you know, you're right. Things have dropped a lot. Um, a lot of it's due to inflation, of course. But uh, the one thing that, you know, I'm, I'm telling my clients and other investors is when you're selling your investment property, because this is the, 
the topic that we're talking about is, you know, you have to leave some meat on the bone. So, you know, calculate, uh, you know, if you're analyzing your property that you're selling, put yourself on the buyer side. Well, what are they going to be, you know, looking at when they want to buy this home? You know, they're, they're going to want to see that they have a little bit of um, vacancy contingency, um, maybe some management, a maintenance budget. Like, so when, when you're on the other side of the fence, you know, you, you want to leave a little bit of meat on the bone so that you're, you know, the, the buyer will be interested. If you price it for, you know, how this house is going to look down the road, you know, the, there's a lot of people doing that right now. Um, you're not going to get as much interest. You know, if you're pricing it as per what the future rents will be or, or how this, this property will look after you renovate it and, and you know, it's, it's not going to bring as much interest. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Uh, that was a very big strategy, people. I noticed that a lot of people were doing l last year and mainly I think two years ago was exactly what you're saying, right? It's like they would price the property of the house as the finished product and it's instead of like what it actually is worth and then like that so that you just where you'd be like where's the cash flow or where's the you know the equity builds right is uh um just people were just i don't know <laughs> going to the moon or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, exactly and a lot of the reasoning for doing that is you know uh, you know, well, as we all know, sometimes you would wake up in the morning and a house went up 10, 10 K just like that. So things were appreciating very quickly. So we were able to do that and take advantage of the, um, fat, you know, the, the market appreciating so quickly, but, but now investors are, are looking for something that will um, give them positive cash flow, And, you know, that's going to be a good return on, on mm -hmm. their investment. And um, that, strategy won't work anymore as a seller so you definitely have to price it right um yeah and then on the buyer side uh what are you seeing um so on the buyer side now you're you're able to put in offers with conditions compared to last year so you are able to do that which is a nice thing um the days of unconditional offers um you know bidding you know, on, on, on properties like crazy with, with other, you know, 20 other people, it's, it, it's kind of gone, but um, like I said, I have seen the odd one happen, like on, on, on a flip property, especially, but in, and in some cases too, like some sellers are even open to vendor take backs now to get their property sold. And, and sometimes, you know, it's to defer their taxes or uh, get a little interest, um, from yeah, that's stuff. a very good point. I feel like you're hearing a lot about a lot about that the VTBs and uh, and uh, being open to that now. Just to I guess, why do you think uh, why do you think that is actually? Um, I think it's just uh, kind of an incentive to uh, to the buyer to like, especially with the high interest rates. You know, if they could they could help. Um, you know, do a little seller financing, maybe on the down payment or, or a portion of that mortgage. It, it, that's the reason why, just to help sell the property a bit quicker. Mm -hmm. um, so the, in, in some cases, like I'm not saying it, it, it's going to be possible, but, uh, you know, in some cases, some sellers may be open to that. Generally mm -hmm. speaking, it's going to happen to someone that's had the property for a long time. The property is probably paid off or very close to it, uh, where you'll see that situation. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, it's very true. Because I remember, I mean, last year and the year before, they were like, it was rare to find it was the other way, you know, it's like rare to find like no one would consider VTB because it's just like, I just want my cash up front and done and over with, right? <laughs> Whereas that, now, right. it's, uh, yeah, now, and I, actually, I guess that's a good point that you say that it's more to help the buyers buy it so that they themselves can also move on to what they need to do too. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes too, if the seller has had that property for many years and, you know, it, it is paid off, they may do that just to defer some taxes. You know, if they sell it this year, then they can hold a VTB and, and kind of split that up between a couple of years or, or two or three years, depending on how long that VTB is. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you know what else actually I've heard in the past that people have done VTBs is just so they don't spend all their money. <laughs> <laughs> Some people that will actually do that, which I think it's kind of smart because I feel like 
for example, me, I'm, I'm very much a saver. Like for me, I feel like it's not hard to save. I can't say that I'm a super crazy spender on things that um, like I shouldn't spend on, but I can just think of other people who are, and it's something that, you know, it's kind of like a nice alternative for those people. Cause if you know yourself, where it's like, you see all this money in your bank account and maybe you're going to start splurging a lot more just because, you know, it's kind of like you forget that it's still like it's not an infinite amount or something. And they just kind of get excited and they start spending that money. And then all of a sudden you're just like, oh, you know, I don't have like as much as I needed for a down payment of something or or whatever it is, you know, they spend it. So it's, it's actually I, I was thinking in that sense, it's kind of also nice because it forces you to, you know, let's say live within a budget, for example and um and uh and not have that money disappear so quickly so i thought that was interesting when the i i knew someone that they did that they did a vtv for that purpose and i was just like oh that's very smart <laughs> especially yeah. that you know yourself that you're if you're like a spender and you know that about yourself it's kind of like a nice way to restrict yourself from from putting yourselves in you know in a in a tough situation i agree yes mm -hmm. And uh, so what about uh, strategies for investors? What, what, uh, what are you seeing in the Hamilton market? What are the strategies people, investors are doing right now? Um, so in, in the fall of 2022, well, we all know it was big news at the time that you know, the city allowed single family homes to be converted, you know, up to, well, three units up to even four units in Hamilton, which gets a little tricky on the fourth unit. You definitely have to talk to your um, designer about that. But um, uh, especially duplexes are good entry level, uh, small multifamily for people. So be, be able to kind of add a, a garden suite or a coach house, um, if you will, to the property. It, it certainly will improve your uh, cash flow. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely got to work your numbers to see if the return is viable and all that. But um, that's a huge thing here in Hamilton now. Um, the nice thing is, too, is that if you are a single family homeowner and you do want to make some income from your property, um, you have the ability to do a, a secondary suite in your basement or a garden suite. So, um, yeah, this kind of helps some people, um, you know, uh, being able to be kind of an entry level investor as well mm -hmm. um, but also seasoned investors too are looking for um, properties that they can do a secondary suite and and possibly add that third or fourth unit on the property as well so that's that's pretty big in Hamilton right now that um, is huge that they do that I'm curious though if they're allowing like three units and now four units in some places how do you know how that's working for parking? Because I know, for example, Hamilton is even just tough when you're doing duplexes that you needed the side by side parking. Have they, um, like, so as far as yeah, I have talked to uh, my designer about that, and um, like, I'm going to say secondary suite conversions we've done. We've always historically needed a side by side parking spot, and even for a garden suite, a third spot. So he said that. As it stands now, the parking kind of stands that way. Like you, you kind of do need it, but he thinks that as time goes on, that the the city will loosen up on those restrictions. So I guess time will tell. It's it's still pretty new, um, mm -hmm. and um, you know the garden suite thing is new. I do know some um, investors that are in, you know, putting them in right now, and. Um, I even uh, met someone that's doing a fourth unit as, as well on a property. Oh, so yeah. We'll see kind of how that turns out. But, it you know, it's still fairly new to Hamilton. Um, but, yeah, well, we'll see where it goes. Another advantage is if you could find a property with a large garage on it, sometimes you can just convert that garage and, you know, uh, bring your expenses substantially down from having to build it from scratch. So sometimes mm. you can convert that. And people have done it. Um, so that's a great way to add some more cash flow for, for smaller properties. Um, yeah, hundred percent. I think it's sure. great that they, they have, uh, they've started to ease on those types of things because, um, although I wonder what's going to happen still at the market, because I mean, I felt like last year, again, last year, two years ago, 
I mean, I think, I mean, now too, even duplexes don't cash flow. And it's like great that they're going to increase the amount of units to help to be able for investors to make some kind of cash flow. I just hope that people don't go crazy on the prices again, you know, because it's like uh, I felt uh, these last couple of years, these few years were a little like, I don't know, a little logical. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. And, and the, you know, with the interest rates where they are today, too, um, of course, the prices have dropped, interest rates are up, you know, your expenses are going to be similar still, right, because of the in, in increase in the interest rates. But what a lot of us investors are, are looking at is, um, you know, waiting for that time when the rates will go back down a little bit. And um, then your cash will go up substantially. So it kind of at this point, you know, with, with the drop in, in uh, the price of homes, like it sounds scary when I said, yeah, we were hovering around a million dollars. Now we're at 753. Um, well, not everywhere has dropped that much, but, you know, I've seen between 15 to, you know, 25% in Hamilton. And, and it depends on where you are in the city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the And it also, to be honest, numbers. needed to drop in value because uh, like that, the fact that Hamilton was a million and uh, like Burlington, I mean, there's oh, more than a million, but like how close it was getting to, you know, all the other cities was uh, quite shocking, actually. And and because um, even, for example, like Mississauga, I felt like Mississauga and Barrington, for example, were very getting uh, Brampton and Burlington were even getting very close to the prices of, let's say, Oakville and Toronto and in the same like style of houses. Whereas like now it's like I feel like we're seeing, you know, like things are now I feel like the cities are now kind of blending and going back to the regular ratios of what they are for each city. So I felt like same thing with Hamilton. Like I just felt like a lot of the cities just needed to like simmer down and, and uh, you know, like go back to the ratios that they were supposed to be at. Yeah, it was kind of uh, appreciation was hap happening kind of at an unsustainable rate, um, you know, 30% year after year, <laughs> you know, kind of is sustain unsustainable. So it is nice to see that it has cooled down a little bit. Uh, I think it did need to happen. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think it's going to cool down a little bit more this year? Do you think, like, well, I'm curious on your predictions, and again, it's just your opinion before yeah, and, and my, anyone and opinion. gets upset with us <laughs> because we're, we're saying things and uh, then we get it wrong. But I'm curious on just your opinion on well, uh, what do you Just kind think? of looking at how, you know, history's shown us and, you know, the last, you know, eight interest rate hikes, for example, that, you know, prices have gone down. So I do think that we will see a little bit more cooling. I don't think it's going to be this substantial, like 25%, 15%. Um, but it will go down a little bit. But let's say 5 to 10 is, is my prediction. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that nothing, I don't think much more than that. But I, I don't have a crystal ball. But in, mm -hmm. the interest rates are... Um, like, like, for example, the last hike that just happened was 0.25%. Uh, so it wasn't half or one point. So they're, I think what they're seeing is that inflation is slightly cooling and they're being careful how much they're increasing those rates right now, the government at least. So um, that's my prediction. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, exactly. We'll yeah. I kind of agree with you. I agree <laughs> with you. I think same thing. I think... Uh, I feel like we're not going to see a crazy down just because you see crazy downs when you see crazy ups. So this is what we saw last year, right? We saw a crazy up in the February, very March market, and we saw it go back down again. Um, and in the same ratio, maybe a little bit more, I'm not sure on that, but you, you see a crazy up and I mean, a crazy down happens, but I feel like now it's like you said, you know, I think it's going to probably go down a little more, uh, but it's going to be like a, a small like slow increase I don't think we're going to see any like all of a sudden things are just going to bottom especially with uh um the Bank of Canada saying that they're going to just pause things for right now so I think that's also I think everyone's basically waiting like let's see if let's see if things are just going to go back to normal slowly I think is what they're probably guessing yeah I think so and you know from a buyer's perspective if you've been sitting on the sidelines kind of waiting for um 
you, your time to purchase. Like I always say, well, once the right time, I always say it's now anyways, there's, uh, I don't think there's ever really a bad time to buy real estate, but certainly, you know, I would say properties are on sale now, even though the interest rates are higher, um, you're buying the property for a lower price than you would have a year ago or two years ago. So, um, you know, just ride out the higher interest rates and, and when they start to, to go down, then, uh, you know, you, you purchased your property at discount, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, I think the exact same thing. This is the time because like that, like the interest rates are going to be high for a while. Let's say, let's say two years, maybe three years do, you know, even let's say four years, do a four year term. And then by the time you're done the four years, you're going to probably see a nice drop to your, to your mortgage. And then you'll be cash flowing, uh, more than you were before and it's just uh, or you do a refi and maybe pull out more money who knows you know but at least uh, I agree it's like take advantage of the interest rate hikes and but again and I keep on like take advantage but also don't overprice like let's not get to what happened like a year two years ago because it was just uh just uh some I just I don't know how people are running their numbers <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's still important to like, you know, yourself, Diana, to, to, you know, make sure that you're at, at a minimum, I'm going to say breaking even, but we, we all like to see some cash flow, but you definitely don't want to purchase something where it's, it's you're putting, you know, you in a negative cash flow position. Um, so yeah, definitely calculate your numbers, even at these discounts that you are, um, you know, covering all your expenses and, and cash flowing a little bit. 100%. Curious for the audience, let us know what your predictions are. We'd love to hear what you guys think is going to happen this year. Let us know if you're in Hamilton or where you're from and tell us like that, what city and what your predictions are, because it's always great to hear what everyone else is thinking. Do you think, do you think, are you thinking differently, the same? would love to hear what your thoughts are. And um yeah. So, and uh, so anything else that you'd like to let us know about? Um, yeah. So, so something strategy? interesting that that's, that's come into play here in Hamilton, like, you know, politics play a big role in, in everything. Of course, we all know that, um, but uh, Hamilton now has some um, restrictions on short-term rentals. So, um, no, the, the bylaw came in force in about uh, January 2021. It required a property owner to, you know, attend it to rent out their space for less than 28 days to get licensed. And it's kind of being implemented now. So if you do have a short-term rental in Hamilton, you do have to get a license by May 31st, 2023. Um, so that's something that's new. So if you're renting uh, your property for less than 28 days, you do have to get licensed. Um, so, you know, some people aren't happy about that, but um, I think it was, you know, parties and complaints from neighbors and the city kind of wants to get that long term rental supply back up is what they were finding is that people were Airbnb their properties for short, short term periods and they were seeing a lot of um, vacant apartments as well. And uh, the, the city kind of wants to uh, fill that gap right and um so they implemented licensing um so how do you get around it um well you can do like a midterm rental so just just rent it longer than 28 days but if you want to do the short-term thing you're definitely gonna have to be licensed um, and is it a lot of money do you know how much it is ballpark I, i'm not quite sure what the prices uh right now um I don't do a lot of uh, like I actually don't do short term rentals in Hamilton myself. I I, I prefer like a, like a, a mid to long term tenancy. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you know I, I I can get that uh, for you though. Mm -hmm. or, or what would you get? But I just feel like it can't be too much, you know, like a couple hundred dollars. Like I feel like for an Airbnb, I think it'll be or... substantial. Yeah, it? uh, it'll be substantial. Yeah. Um, Cause I just I feel like will. for an Airbnb or person, uh, I mean, if a couple hundred dollars are breaking the budget, you're probably not doing Airbnb properly anyways. And you probably <laughs> need to like check That's up sure. on how you're doing it. Right? <laughs> so it's like, it's an annoying money grab, but at the same time, I feel like it shouldn't be deterring people if that's like your strategy or that's what you want to do. Although I'm curious yeah. on, how that would work for uh, Airbnb arbitrage. 
um would it be the person because it would be because it would it's the homeowner would have to get it yeah um, it, it, that's definitely going to change that for short term for mm -hmm. sure like you you actually have to be the um the homeowner that's that's doing the short-term rental now so that arbitrage probably won't uh work in anymore mm -hmm. um, or short yeah. term, that's for sure I know that, that that has something that's been you know got a lot of traction in the last uh, year or two, but in Hamilton it's going to be a little bit more challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or at least I guess the homeowner gets it, but um, but the probably the person that's doing the arbitrage will actually maybe just pay them, um, you know, pay them back or something for getting it. Yeah, that, that's certainly yeah you're right a, a way around the uh, to mm -hmm. do it there for sure. Um, yeah, because it is, it is, uh, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's just like, it's funny how, you know, you set these kind of, they'll set these kind of rules. And actually, I guess it's like, and then it's like, you see the entrepreneur mindset come in. Okay, how can, how can I still make this work for, <laughs> for my situation, whatever it is like that for, I'm sure for Airbnb, they're probably like that. They're already on it trying to figure out what's the loophole, right? <laughs> Exactly. How can yeah, I everyone. still do it within the constraints? <laughs> yeah, but you know, besides that, that's you know, um aren't they doing another test too right now for for um long-term rentals? Aren't you having isn't it aren't they having to get licensed too? Some kind of license or no? Um th there was some licensing for student rentals, but um in terms of long term, I'm not aware aware of it at this point. But um yeah, so far we, we don't. Uh, okay, so just for um, Airbnb right now. Airbnbs and some student rentals around like the uh, university um, in a certain neighborhoods um, around that area have to be licensed for student rentals. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, besides besides that kind of doom and gloom, like it's, it's not horrible, but, uh, you know, there's a lot happening in Hamilton. I still think that it's, uh, there's a lot of upside. And um, like there's a ton of development happening in the downtown core. Mm -hmm. um, for example, like uh, some you know large companies are are demolishing buildings and putting up large condo towers. Uh, the old Eaton Center, the Hamilton City Center, that you know some of your listeners are probably aware of. That's you know on on the north side of Jackson Square will be demolished, and uh, condos are going up there um yeah if you kind of just drive around that area around jackson square king william and a lot of those downtown core streets you'll see a lot of development happening so these companies you know they're they're doing their research before they come to hamilton they see hamilton as uh as, as a, a future place to you know to be in mm -hmm. so a lot's happening around there um and i well and i think the city is just incentivizing a lot of gentrification to happen over there um to help those areas out because yeah I feel like even if you go to the zoning maps you start seeing permits 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 for who knows like how many floors you're like 40 floors you know 50 floors <laughs> so you're definitely yeah, yeah. seeing oh, for sure yeah and Hamilton a lot, of a lot of permits um yeah a lot's happening here it's 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 pretty cool um the LRT that you know some people are aware of that that project will commence you know, the construction school the, the major construction is supposed to commence in 2024 so that you know there there's a lot of um cool things happening um in in Hamilton right now and uh, I I still like the city um most of my uh my uh, real estate investments myself are in Hamilton I I like the city um and i still think that there's uh, a huge future for hamilton i i think in 10 years um a lot of us will not even recognize hamilton in my opinion so i agree i think like that the changes that they're trying to place and uh and like the openness of like of the municipality of to try to really bring a new hamilton I, you can just tell that they're they're on the mission to get that and and you're right i think like that in 10 years it's gonna probably be it's probably gonna be like um like a mississauga you know like the, it's like mississauga is like building like their hub there like you have like a downtown hub i feel like the same thing's happening they're gonna be building like that really nice hub in hamilton and uh i think it's just the demographic is gonna change quite a bit it's gonna be interesting to see it will be yeah i think um yeah there's some exciting stuff definitely gonna happen 
um, in the future uh, mm -hmm. and, and happening now, a lot, lots and lots happening. So any other strategies that you want to talk about that, um, that you think are good or, um, or to stay away from uh, anything? Well, to be honest, um, a strategy that I'm not really implementing right now is um, flipping as much, um, in, unless you're a professional, like in, in, we, all, we all, Dan, as a professional in flipping mm -hmm. homes. But if you don't have that type of expertise, I would caution you on uh, doing it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, things aren't appreciating like you did before. So you definitely got to run your numbers, understand your construction costs, definitely understand um, what that home will sell for when you're when you're uh, completed the flip and you're holding costs and everything involved so uh you definitely um th that's that's one area that you got to be a little bit careful um i'm not going to say don't do it but definitely you know there's some caution on, on that uh, strategy for sure 100 percent, i completely agree and just to probably add a little more onto that i kind of completely agree that people that like their first time and they want to do a flip I would say partner up with people that are experienced because yes. a flip is like the e the easiest way to lose your all your money if you don't know what you're doing and and because it's not a like flipping is not a good experiment to see like how things go you know I feel like for example like burrs are good long term holes are good because you you can you can like buy super high right now but then like. 10, 55, 10, 15 years down the road, you know, you are already making money and like you're recuperating everything again, but a flip is like so short term that you can actually just like, it could be, it can be devastating, which I, I'm probably sure it happened to a lot of people last year, still thinking that we're going in this boom, boom, crazy market is going to continue going up and, um, you know, didn't, didn't like, you know, just didn't see the signs um that things were going down and um so yeah I think I think now is probably if anything the time is either work for flippers partner up with flippers like do things where you can uh where um you can learn from it uh, and understand how people are gauging let's say the market or running their numbers because even like that like we've changed the way we run our calculations on how to buy properties right now and it's a, like the double-edged sword right because it's kind of frustrating because like that like this is like i see people are a lot of people aren't accepting the price drops that need to happen because of the interest rates um or just like that like thinking for example oh my house is you know um like needs only 100k of renovations so you know by then it'll be worth 600 so i can sell it for 500 and it's like no it doesn't work that way there's like a lot more other expenses involved in in a flip uh being able to actually be successful like not only holding costs are missing closing costs are missing you know but and then closing twice i would say closing costs for twice Yes. But it's also like you're supposed to be making some kind of margins plus a little buffer to make sure in case expenses, some unforeseen expenses happen, right? So it's like, I definitely agree with you. It's something that flipping is for people, like, I don't think new people should be thinking about flipping. If anything, go maybe learn about it, like go and actively work with people on it. But don't don't do it as a first time. So don't go on your own and try to figure it out right now because it's just way too much of a learning curve. It's like not only the calculations you got to worry about, the market you have to worry about, but also actually, you know, finding the right contractors that won't, um, you know, end up costing you way more than you expected. You know, it's just like way too much of a learning curve to be trying to do something like that right now. Yeah, I certainly agree. Um... Like a, a lot of my my clients and and and, and partners too, and investing right now, we're we're focusing more on buying holds and and properties that we can burn. Um, I specifically, um, I, I like small uh, multifamily and uh, looking at a little bit larger stuff too. But um, and I find. Uh, I, I've I I do like that space. I've, I've been in the multifamily for a little while now. And um, yeah, it works well for me. Um, 
I, I just want stuff personally that that cash flows. Mm -hmm. And um, if I'm going to do the burr strategy, if um, uh, you know, I'm going to look for something that um, I don't care if I get all my money out of it as um, if I'm going to burr it as long as I get a good portion out of it. But you can't expect to get all of your money out of that property in, in this market today with the interest rates. It's just it's going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. So um, and just you know, on how conservative also, to be honest, um, banks are right. I don't know. How, have you been uh, have you been noticing anything with the banks? Because I've only like heard, but it just sounds like that, like banks are are very conservative on their or getting their appraisals. They want conservative appraisals now. Um, are you seeing any of that? Curious on if you're seeing um, any of that with your. I, I think um, so. What's happening with some some people are their appraisals um, aren't coming in as high as they want them to come in, so they aren't being you know they're not going to be able to finance as much money out of it that they were intending to do. So you definitely got to uh, you know look at your numbers really well, get advice from your realtor on on what that property would be worth when you're done renovating it and getting your rents up and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. um, and then probably and even just what you can afford out. also. Sorry, what was the last thing you said? Well, I was going to say, and probably after, you know, your realtor gives you some advice and it take, take another, you know, five to 10% off that too, because you, you just never know, right. Um, mm -hmm. What could happen just in that period yeah. of time, like yeah. um, things are changing rapidly and um you know, just a small interest rate hike of 0.25% can change things all over again because the stress test, of course, now that adds a little bit more to it. And um, yes, yeah, so there's a lot of factors for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like that, because even maybe you do get the appraisal, a good appraisal amount, but if your income can't handle the the loans, I mean, that's also another way, which I feel like it's, it is very hard with the interest rates being higher it is hard for people to just even be able to actually qualify for the amounts anymore uh, just because of the, um, the hot, how quickly it's increased. Yeah. So, you know, um, on the upside, though, there is a lot of uh, great mortgage brokers out there that um, I work with. And, um, you know, when it, it comes to looking the conventional way of what we were just talking about and you hit all these uh, roadblocks, you just got to work with someone that has creative financing options and mm -hmm. um there is there's ways around all these things so um that's the good news at least <laughs> so exactly exactly can, uh, reach out i'm happy to uh any one of your listeners if, if you know they're looking for a mortgage broker that can help them with that stuff happy to um share my uh contacts so that's awesome that's great yeah it's always i feel like it's always needed especially like that in our world as a real estate investors <laughs> I think creative financing is like the biggest part in all this. <laughs> it certainly is. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's, the, that's the main things happening in Hamilton anyways. So um, yeah. Um, so any, any uh, final notes that you'd like to say about it or, or any like that, uh, how can they reach you? Anything you'd like to, uh, any final comments? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, if your listeners want to reach me, they could, um, reach me at uh, dimitri.boundries uh, at exprealty.com um, or they can reach me at 289-456-5896. Happy to talk about real estate anytime. Awesome. Yeah. And also he'll be, uh, I'll be linking his account to uh, this. So, so like that, if you do want to connect with Dimitri, he'll be linked in the description. So you can contact him through there too. And, um, and yeah, and if you, if you love what you hear on this show, um, we go live on my Facebook group. It's called, uh, the real estate, um, the real estate investor, uh, district and there that's the Facebook group. And, uh, so if you guys want to see that live, but it also goes on YouTube too. So, um, if you guys love what you hear, give us a like you know, share and um, let us know your thoughts. And if you have any other questions, maybe that we didn't answer or go through, um, definitely let us know. And maybe at a future in a future episode, we can answer them or we'll probably, I'm sure, I'm sure in the future, we'll be doing another update on the market or other things just because 
like that. I don't know. I feel like this year is going to be a very fluctuating and lots of changes happening. I feel like for some reason. No, I certainly agree. I, I think it's going to be like a quarter to quarter um, mm -hmm. update that people are going to want to hear uh, in certain markets. It's uh, it's going to be an interesting year. So, but, uh, but, but still a great year to invest. So I, I yeah. wouldn't discourage anybody from doing that. Um, I'm definitely no, not. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I completely agree. And like that, as you were saying, for first time, first time buyers or investors, I think like that start with the long term or something where like that the, or a burr where it's like you can learn from it you can make mistakes you know and and not hurt so much and um and then from there you, and it also gives you the time to learn how the market's going because i feel personally that once you're in it for long enough you start seeing the signs of things happening and you start like, and it's just like, you got to stay updated with the market or stay updated, to be honest, with the networks, <laughs> you know, what is everyone up to, you know, chatting like that, me and Dimitri ch chat every so often, we're always keeping each other up to date, seeing what's going on and talking to so many people just because like that, like, like I said, right now is the time that uh, there's just, I just feel like this year, there's just going to be so many changes. And like you said, quarterly, right. I, I th think the same thing. And, um, and like that, if you're staying up to date with what's going on and just communicating with your peers, you're going to start noticing, you know, the changes happening like that. Like I felt like last year I saw the drops of prices happening to me. That was I, I you could tell it was going to happen. But I think a lot of people, for example, were stuck in their properties, like renovating, getting it done, you know, and not really paying attention to what's happening at the market at the time. And so they're not like foreseeing it and they're just like in the go, go, go quick, quick, quick. But it's like, you guys always have to check. Cause you can, I feel like you can usually tell at least two to three months in advance what's happening. And in, in my opinion, I feel like you can usually kind of start uh, gauging what's happening and maybe like that, maybe I may be doing like, Oh, I think it's going to be like a down market forever. But then in three months, I may change my mind. Like now it's going to go up. But, but I feel like within the few, like a few months, I feel like you can usually get an idea of what's going to happen. Yeah. I, I think, you know, real estate, um, still is a solid investment. I, I personally, um, will say that over the years, it's been the best place that I've put my money. Um, it's solid. It's very hard to make, um, make a mistake in real estate. Um, you know, uh, you just have to work with the right people, the right realtor, the right mortgage broker and, and surround yourself with the right people. And, uh, also just have a secondary exit plan or, or maybe, or two for your property. It could be plan to flip your property. Um, you know, and, and that doesn't work out, then have a plan in place that you could rent that property or, or possibly yeah. maybe, um, joint venture with somebody or whatever it is, have a couple options available. Mm -hmm. And um, that certainly will, um, you know, give you, uh, you know, the advantage right there. So, 100%. So. Yeah, I completely agree. And just to be adaptable, which I think is, I mean, I feel like a, it's almost like the definition of an entrepreneur. No, <laughs> it's like the markets do this and we just got to like go with the flow. And like you said, be prepared for, to go with that flow and like, okay, things are changing. How, how am I changing now? And what am I going to do? And I mean, again, all these things come with experience, but, um, um, but you know, you start learning to go with the flow of things I feel like. And, uh, and then you just start seeing like that, the trends, you start seeing trends happening. Um, you just start seeing like that you're communicating with everyone and you just start seeing, okay, this is happening. So you, you may start changing like that. My calculations has changed actually a few times in the last year, to be honest, I had like my calculations for how I check properties has changed a few times just because like that, I talked to someone, I'm like, oh, this is happening. Okay. Let me, you know, and then I'm like, okay, let me take that into consideration. I'm like, oh, that's happening now. Okay. Let me take that into consideration. So it's like, yeah, I think it's very important to stay connected um like that if you need any support Dimitri is always there to help you especially the Hamilton area you're the expert what are the other areas you also have a couple other areas that you do or are you just solely focused in Hamilton well, my main area is the greater Hamilton area but you know that kind of um you know goes I, I do do kind of go to Brantford Burlington um mm. you know, south of Hamilton down to Niagara region so um it's just that my my specialty is the greater Hamilton area so 
yeah, just certainly reach out for any one of those areas. I, um, I've invested in in those areas myself personally, so I can help clients with that and uh, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, I think that's very important because you actually understand like the investor mindset, which is very important for, um, for finding someone that to work with an investor. Cause I feel like that's also become sometimes an issue. It's like, if you find a realtor that that hasn't invested or, you know, or specifically invested like as a real estate investor, um, uh, you just, you notice the difference. I think that's like, that's one of the things that I like about you is that you actually have done it and it's very, and it helps a lot because you understand, you know, my mindset and where I'm going at with things. No, well, thanks. I appreciate that comment. Awesome. So if you guys have any questions, let us know and we'll be happy to answer them. And thank you so much, Dimitri, for coming on. It was a lot of great information and really helpful. Thank you so much. Well, thanks a lot, Dana. I appreciate you having me on the show. Always a pleasure. Bye, Dimitri. Bye, everyone.